Hey, what's up, you guys? Jazz Satya here in Singapore, and as always, thank you so much for joining me on the Night Owl podcast, you guys. Some heavy, heavy concepts. I felt like they were heavy to me. I don't know if they're heavy to you, but they were heavy to me the last couple of podcast episodes. But I wanted to close it out with this last one, if you would just bear with me one more time. We've been talking about burdens and how to unburden and how to, you know, allow people in to let you share some of the things that you find hard because maybe they don't find it hard. Maybe they can make light work of it. And so you give them the things that you don't like so much because they like them more than you like them and maybe they can help you out. And the second episode was more about, you know what, how do I trust people? How do I allow myself to be myself the way I am at home outside? Is it okay if I burp and fart in front of everybody? Is it okay if I walk out of the house looking like a hot mess uh, with my hair all over the place, like I haven't washed myself in days? Is that okay? Yeah, of course it's okay, but you also have to deal with the repercussions, right? So let's talk about that for a second. When you go out and you finally decide, you know what, I'm done pretending. I don't want to put up this, you know, farce it is a farce um this character this avatar of myself that i'm just this great person and nothing ever can bother me or shake my confidence i'm just amazing and a lot of times i do that for me right i dress up on purpose i step out of the house fresh makeup hair washed i i want to feel good about myself it's my pick me up for the world because i know that i will hopefully get some you know encouraging comments if I post it on social media if, if people will say oh my gosh you look so great today yeah today because I made an effort because I wanted to get out of my funk I was trying to actively dig myself out of the hole that I was feeling the last couple of days or whatever so these are the things I try to do for myself and a lot of people do the same right they adorn themselves they get dressed they try to eat good food they try to meet people they try to step out of the house to pick up their spirits because maybe they're tired of being at home maybe they're tired of the mundane maybe they're suffocating at home because covid for one thing has been suffocating us in one form or another whether it's a mask whether it's being stuck at home whether it's being limited in the places that you can go and why you can go there how many people you can meet all of those things it's been suffocating right Uh, a lot of times our movements have been restricted our ability to work has been restricted our ability to make money has been restricted it's been ridiculous literally ridiculous so what do we do in those cases how do we make sure that we can find our way through this because like i said in the last episode suicide rates have been staggering really unbelievable around the world um i did a couple of interviews for a magazine and a a newspaper in australia and we were talking about mental health and how suicide is rising in men because their whole identity is built around the fact that they need to be the sole breadwinner they need to be able to provide for the family and it's this expectation that really crushes all of us because who says you need to believe all those things but we do because we want to get along with the people around us and this is the way things are they've been that way for hundreds of years and why should i question it now But the bottom line being, okay, so you have this burden, you realize it's a burden. You don't know who you can trust with the burden. You don't know who will step up and help you out with the burden. You don't know who will say, no, that's your responsibility. Why should I? Right? There are all these things that go through your head. So how do you decide who to speak to, what to speak about, if it's okay to speak about the things that's on your heart to speak about? How do you decide those things? How do you figure that out? How do you find your tribe? Well, guess what? Catch-22, the same thing with trust again. In order to find your tribe, you have to be yourself. Or you will attract people based on who you're pretending to be. Like, Like attracts like, right? So if you are having a tough time with socioeconomic status, some people have, some people have not. Some people flaunt the fact that they have all of these things and you want to flaunt as well because you want to be seen as successful because that is the measure against which society measures success. And so you push yourself, you break yourself to try to get to that place where you think that is success, but that is not success by your definition, that's success by someone else's definition. And so you feel like a fuck up, you feel like a screw up. I, I saw someone the other day that was posting, uh, you know, the fact that she was upset and she was really on the edge because she said this to this person i'm a fuck up to that person i'm a fuck up i'm a fuck up here i'm a fuck up there i'm a fuck up everywhere yes a lot of f-bombs today i'm sorry but the point is that's how she felt and it hurt my heart to hear her say that but i also realized i've been in that place i know what she feels like where you can't win for losing nothing you're doing seems to be making any headway i've been in situations where i've been trying to pay down debt okay that's easy to understand paying down debt because there's interest involved and you do it a little bit every day every day every day every month every month every month every month and at the end of the day nothing has changed because the interest is still there and you haven't made much of a dent and it's still this looming thing in front of you 
And I did it once when I was in college and I finally dug myself out of debt and I found a way to get around it. And I swore to myself, never again, no credit cards, God damn it, no. And then I fell upon hard times in Singapore right when I started my business and I thought, oh my gosh, I need something to be a safety net just in case, just in case. And I got a credit card and I was approved and it was great. And I felt brilliant until I spent some of that money. And then they called me and said, hey, let's refinance because you know what? We can reduce your credit card rate. The interest could go down. You could do this. And I stupidly did that. And I didn't realize they did change the terms of how that money would be paid back. And it was stretched out over a long period of time rather than right away when I paid the money back. It was slick and I wasn't ready. It caught me off guard and I'm still chewing off that piece of fat that I decided I was going to indulge myself with. So yes, it was difficult. But the point being, when sometimes, no matter what you do, you feel like it's not making an effort, it's not making a dent, it's not making a difference. You wonder why you should continue. You wonder why you're here on this planet. You wonder what the hell you even exist for. I had somebody come to me the other day and they approached me through social media. They're really having a tough time of it. And they said, you know what? Um, I'm actually overwhelmed. But another person reached out to me and said, hey, can you help me? I'm actually quite suicidal. And I was not in a frame of mind to be able to help them. And I referred them to you. And I said, great, okay, let's handle this. So I spoke to the young man and he said, you know what? I don't know. You're a professional. And I've been to so many professionals. I've been to IMH. I've been to, you know, counseling wards. I've been, uh, suicidal before and they admitted me and they put me through a series of tests and they diagnosed me and they decided for me what was wrong with me and none of it helped because my feelings were still the same when I came off the medication the feelings were still there the the stressors in my life were still there nothing around me changed and I did not change I was just numb to it I couldn't feel anything and so I don't trust professionals and I'm just going to tell you right now that if you can't help me no offense to you but I think I'm just going to finish this off myself And I was panicking. I was freaking out because, oh my God, now all this pressure is on me. Like, how do I help this person? I haven't even heard their story yet. What do I do? And I said, no, I'm going to try anyway. And whether it helps or not, I don't know. I'm just going to be there and spend some time and see if I can listen and hear anything that might be a place in their life that I could help with. They were of the impression that if they died, their debt would disappear with them. And I said, no, that's not how that works. They don't get their money then and that's not what they want. They don't want you to die because if they wanted you to die to get their money back, they would have killed you by now. But that's not the way this works. They want you capable of paying the money back. They might hurt you in ways and threaten you in ways that make you scared for your life so you need to pay the money back. But that doesn't mean that they're actually going to get the money if if they don't leave you alive. So you dying means the debt goes to the next person in line. The next person associated with you that could pay the money back. That's not going to stop your problems. The problems will still be there. Okay, well, you know, I'm a burden to people. Okay, you're a burden to people. I get it. People see you as a burden. I've been seen as a burden before too, and that's not a fun place to be. But what can you do so you don't feel like a burden? Before they tell you you're a burden, what can you do that you feel you could make yourself more useful or more helpful? Or you could take care of some of the things by yourself instead of having to take other people take care of it for you. Now, this person unfortunately had several people that shouldn't have been depending on him, depending on him because he was a kind guy and he really wanted to help out. But because he'd said yes in so many places, he was now stretched so thin, he didn't feel like he had any more choices left. But in listening to him, I realized who would actually help him. I was in no position to help him. The only thing I could do is offer my help for free so he wouldn't feel like he had to pay another person, right? Right. But I couldn't pay his bills down. I couldn't even offer him a job, but I could help him brainstorm. I could help him think about where things could become a little bit easier, maybe. Where he could let go. But ultimately, this is just one person's experience. And for all those people out there who can contemplate suicide, because I've done it myself on several occasions, once you disappear from this world... The problems you had while you were alive don't disappear with you. You don't take that with you. You didn't come into the world with problems. You don't go out of the world with problems. They are left behind for the people who survive you. And as terrifying as that is, you could try suicide and not succeed. If I were to throw you into the middle of the ocean, this is like an old proverb, right? If you were to, if you were to be thrown in the middle of the ocean while you were suicidal, I guarantee you would fight for your life. You would fight for your life. You would not just relax and let the ocean take you because honestly, if you relaxed, you would end up floating. 
but you would not relax. If you were thrown into the ocean, you would fight to gain balance. You would fight to tread water. You would fight to come up for air. You would. It is a defense mechanism. It is a natural a natural place for your nervous system to be. Fight to survive. Fight to survive. Fight to survive. So why is it so easy for us to drown in our thoughts, to keep all these things to ourselves? Why is it so easy to look at yourself as, oh my gosh, I'm a fuck up to everyone. I'm not doing anything worthy in this world. I'm not making a difference. I should just shut up and disappear. Social media is a good example, actually. People out there with all their opinions, and the minute they get some bad feedback, they're like, you know what? Yeah, you're right. I suck. I shouldn't be saying these things. I should probably be quiet. And then when you get blocked or, you know, uh, reprimanded by the social media application itself, like saying that you're spreading rumors or you're, you know, spreading false information, fact check and, and whatever, you start to wonder, well, I mean, what is the point of me having a voice if I can't use my voice? What do I do now? How do I, how do I manage this? Should I even show up anymore? Shouldn't I just deactivate my account and just run away? But that doesn't help you anything either. The people who are going to confront you on social media will still be there in real life. You may not be as bold, right? Because you don't have a computer that you're sitting behind to say all the things that you want to say. But you still feel the same way about life. That doesn't change. So I guess with all of that being said, I want you to remember, when you think of yourself as a screw-up, that you're not capable, that you're not worthy, that these thoughts are overwhelming and you feel like, you know, you're not making any headway in life, you've got to look at by whose definition are you making headway. Maybe you're not making 10,000 posts a year, right? Maybe you're not managing social media like Gary V would. Like, who the fuck would, would be able to do it like Gary V would, right? Because he has entire teams behind him. But maybe you are successful because yesterday you got out of bed and you made it to eat breakfast. And today you got out of bed and you ate breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And that is a success to you because it's more than the day before. For you, not for anybody else. Maybe you had $10 in your pocket and somebody in need in your house was struggling with something and you decided, you know what, this $10 could go to food, but right now I know I could help this person ease their pain with $10 and so why don't I spend it there instead? Life is meant to be simple, but for some reason, we're the only creatures on earth that pay to live here. And that because we decided to invent money and decided to give a value to everything, except when it's resale because that value no longer exists as resale, it's used. <laughs> Life is strange, y'all. And it's mind boggling how we got to this place. But if you ever feel like you're not doing enough, like you're not enough, that you're not successful enough, that you're not making enough money, I want you to really take a hard look and see whose definition you're using to measure your success by. Because I guarantee you it's not your own. I guarantee you it's somebody else's belief that you're struggling to live up to. So why struggle when you can redefine your life for yourself? Why struggle if you can make up the rules for yourself? Maybe success to you is working a minimum wage job, but being able to cook so well that a minimum wage job provides you ingredients that you can make delicious meals with. I learned how to do that because I couldn't afford to take my kids to restaurants, so I learned how to cook at home so that they could enjoy restaurant quality meals on a budget, and they didn't even know how much it cost, seriously. For a while, I was posting my grocery bill so people could see how much I bought for how little because I knew how to shop. I knew how to look for quality ingredients and make sure that they last. For a while I learned how to fix things because I didn't have the money to replace things so I took very good care. I bought quality the first time around so they would last and then when things broke down a little bit I knew how to fix them. I have restored so many rusted, broken, zippers, uh, unhinged, <laughs> mended clothes, so that no one else has to replace it. They don't have to. I can fix it for them. Sometimes success 
is best defined by you so you feel like you're actually making a difference. There was a time where I wasn't sure if I could, you know, do something as a habit every day. And so I had to choose something that was really, really small and um, non-impactful as in like it wouldn't take up too much thought and it wouldn't take up too much time to be able to do it. So I started on Lumosity and I started on, um, gosh, Mad Bars, right? And I was able to carve out 30 minutes in a day, which meant 15 minutes, not even 15 minutes, about 10 minutes on Lumosity where I could exercise my brain for a little bit. And it was games that I was playing, so it was fun, right? And then I could work out for 15 minutes. And it made me feel like I accomplished so much in the day. Whereas before, I wasn't doing anything at all. And I felt like, oh my gosh, what have I done? And sometimes, you know, you sleep in, you wake up late, and and it's like, oh gosh, half the day is gone, and now I haven't gotten anything done, and I might as well just go back to sleep. Whereas when you wake up early and you get a couple of things done within the first hour of you waking up, you feel like, yeah, damn, I got it. Yeah, I could do this. I could definitely handle some shit. Let me get some stuff done today. And guess what? That becomes my definition of success my definition of productivity and once I looked at time that way my whole life changed I thought for a while when I started my business that I had to work a nine to five so that I could accommodate everybody else but guess what nine to five I'm offering services while everybody else is at work so how does that work for me it doesn't so why don't I work a little bit in the morning up until lunchtime and then baby girl can come back home from school and I can play with her for a while and then I work a little bit more at in the evenings after she's gone to bed because then I catch all the time zones and I get people who have just gotten off work where they might actually have time to work with me. I had to redefine things for myself and once I did, I felt a burden lift. I felt a change. Once I defined things for myself, what is a quality meal? What is a happy home? What is peace. What is success? Once I did that for myself, things changed. So as much as we've been talking about burdens and finding the right people and finding the right tribe and being yourself and letting people see you as you are, the next thing to help you ease your struggles, redefine what those ideas are in your life. Redefine your beliefs. Define success for yourself. Define productivity for yourself. Define quality food. Define budgeting. Define enough for yourself so you never again measure yourself against somebody else's ideas because that's where stress comes in, doesn't it? Anyway, you guys, I hope this helped and I will catch you again later. Bye.